Hey, this is Brian with TurpMechanic.com. Today we're looking at two different warm season grass types. You see back there, I got Zoysia, Emerald Zoysia, and I've got Arden 15 Hybrid Bermuda. Both of those grass pots back there were planted about 12 weeks ago, so we are nearing the three month mark. And as you can plainly see, the Bermuda grass is growing gangbusters, while the Zoysia just looks like a nice, tight, dark green mat. Let's look a little bit closer. Approximately five weeks ago, I featured this grass pot on the channel. It was where I was talking about which warm season grass types are easiest to grow from seed. This one was pretty easy to grow from seed, but it wasn't as easy as the Bermuda. Now, before I talk much more about Bermuda, I want to address what looks like these like purple tips that you see and the purpling of the stolons. This is because of cold damage. So where I live, I live up north in a cold season territory. Over the past week, we've approached 40 degrees and I think we've touched the upper 30s overnight. Approximately a month ago, we weren't anywhere close to that. We were regularly in the upper 90s during the daytime and the upper 60s at nighttime. So the Bermuda looked amazing five weeks ago. It's been growing like crazy over the past five weeks, but over the past like seven to 10 days, we've had cooler temperatures. So the growth rate of this grass has slowed down considerably and we're starting to see cold damage. In contrast, the zoysia grass here shows no sign of damage whatsoever. This is actually really thriving. Now, when we talk about cold and heat tolerances, both zoysia and Bermuda have an extremely high tolerance for heat. If you're regularly getting up to 115 in the middle of the summer, this grass is going to do just fine, as is the zoysia. Now, let's contrast that to the cold tolerance. Obviously, as temperatures start dropping down into the low 40s and upper 30s, the grass starts suffering a little bit. It's not dying, but it's definitely suffering. So although Bermuda grass is going to work really well in the southern states, where, or especially where it gets particularly hot, if you have cold nights, say for instance in uh, a desert climate, southern Arizona, it might get to be very hot during the day, but the cooling off at nighttime might be a struggle for this grass type. Whereas this grass type is most likely the the zoysia is most likely not going to be affected by those nighttime cool-offs. Now, both of these grass types have very deep root systems, and both of these grass types, consequentially, can resist drought quite well. Because their roots go down so deep and they're so substantial down there, they don't need to be watered nearly as frequently as some other grass types do. That works really well for potted plants because pots dry out so easily. These grass pots have actually done really well over the summer where I live, even though they do dry out from time to time. You should also note that both Bermuda grass and zoysia grass have above ground stolons and underground rhizomes. Now, because this grass is only 12 weeks old and it's a slow grower, I can't find any substantial stolons yet to pull out. There are some small ones, but nothing substantial enough for me to really pull out and show you. Here, however, Bermuda grass is the complete opposite. It is a very fast and vigorous grower. And although this is only 12 weeks old, there are stolons growing everywhere outside of the pot. And here's some inside the pot right there. And I could probably pull some others out. There's one just kind of laying over on the side. Interesting to note here, the inside of the pot, notice how nothing has reddened up. That purplish hue isn't there because this is protected from the weather. Because this is in a pot, everything on the outside isn't quite protected from the weather the same. So you see more of this reddening out here. As you get lower where it's a little bit more insulated, the red goes away, that purplish hue goes away. And certainly on the inside, it's gone away as well. Because of the deep root system, this is another reason why, although Bermuda grass doesn't like the temperatures to dip down into the 40s and certainly not the 30s. It won't die as the grass goes, as the grass starts experiencing freezing temperatures, unless the freezing temperatures start freezing the soil itself down all the way close to, you know, below 25 to 20 degrees. My kids are playing here, so we're going to be hearing some of them in the, so we're hearing some of them in the background. 
but as temperatures do drop, this will go dormant pretty quickly. Zoysia will not go dormant nearly as fast. So it's another like, it's another reason to like zoysia grass. It's got a wide spectrum of temperature tolerance. It's going to green up if you're growing this in a warm season climate. This is going to green up faster than pretty much all of the other warm season grasses. And it will stay green further into the season than the other grasses. Bermuda, as it goes dormant, everything kind of browns off. The leaf tissues, for the most part, I'm going to call them die. And all of the energy then gets reserved down in the root system. For that reason, at the end of winter, going into early spring, many people who run Bermuda grass lawns will scalp everything off. Like all of this tissue down here, they'll just cut it all the way off so that you only see the brown tips of the bottom and then new leaf tissue starts growing out of it. So they end up getting nice green lawns earlier in the season by scalping. In contrast, to other grass types like zoysia or other like cool season grasses they will brown through the winter but the tissues on top don't quite act the same way we don't need to scalp it all off they will green up on their own through new shoots coming up and old grass browned grass coming back to life again so to speak now in terms of identification just by a passing glance, you're gonna notice that with zoysia grass, the grass blades are generally pretty smooth, matte, there's not a lot of texturing to it, and that center stripe going down the middle, that central vein, isn't very pronounced. This is a slow growing grass. I've only cut this one time in the past 12 weeks. So when you're establishing it from seed, expect it to take a very long time to fill in to be dense like this only now is this dense enough where i feel like i can't hardly see the dirt between the grass blades and the grass blades are finally starting to grow enough that i'm tempted to cut it but if we isolate a single blade and look at it you see how the tip of that blade Let's see where did it go the tip of that blade is pointy and if we look straight down at it it is flat like it's not boat shape or bent there's just a touch of it there on the end but not really zoysia grass tends to be a mostly flat blade with a tip that is very pointy now over here in the bermuda i'm going to pull out one of these green ones that haven't been damaged by overnight cold temperatures all right here i pulled a bermuda grass uh, blade out of the middle of the pot this is mostly undamaged this is a little bit of damage but not too much here you can see these blades are also these are very fine blades they're actually a little thinner than the zoysia blades these are basically like gangly in my opinion unless you're cutting it short very regularly this can get wild i mean look at that but if you isolate single blades and compare them to the zoysia blades they are a little bit skinnier they're not as fat they do still exhibit that pointed tip but the central vein running down the middle is a little bit more apparent and if we take this and we look down this is hard to get on camera but if you look down at it like that you'll see that that newest leaf is folded coming out. See that fold right there in the middle? That's called the vernation. It's a folded verna vernation. If we look at zoysia, it's different. Zoysia, here, let me see if I can isolate one. Now, if we look straight down on zoysia and look at the the baby leaves just coming out, instead of having a folded vernation, it's actually very hard to see on these. There's, there's what looks to be one right there. The newest leaf that comes out, let's see if I can find a better one. This leaf right in the middle, that leaf right in the middle there, is actually coming out in a rounded kind of 
a circular pattern. The vernation is, it's like a rounded vernation as opposed to a folded. It kind of coils around itself and opens up and opens up as it comes out into a normal leaf. Here, this is a perfect view. Right there. That new leaf coming out is not folded. It's rounded like a circle. Now aside from identification, one of the biggest things that's gonna to contribute to your decision to put this in your yard versus this in your yard has to do with the shade. So as you see, I'm sitting in the shade, mostly for lighting purposes. Zoysia is shade tolerant. It certainly is going to perform better if it's out in the full sun, but this will tolerate some shade, a lot more shade than Bermuda. Bermuda, once you put it in shade, kind of like where I'm in right now, like I'm underneath trees here, if Bermuda is growing, if you're trying to grow Bermuda under a tree, it's just not going to work. If it's got too much shade on the side of a house or something like that, it's literally just not going to live. Like, it's just going to die off in that area. Uh, it won't spread into areas like that as well. This is truly a full sun grass. Now, if you have trees in your yard and it gets very, very hot, then go for this. Like, every single time. Or if you've got close neighbors and there's lots of like house shadows, the zoysia is going to be better. If you have tiny little tree rings, zoysia is going to be better. Uh, they'll go closer to that trunk. I'm not going to tell you that zoysia is the best for shady environments, but it's certainly better than Bermuda. When it comes to mowing and fertilization, you're going to be mowing this less frequently. You can grow this really anywhere in height. The op optimal height probably is about one to one and a half inches. Right now, I would guess that this grass here is almost one inch tall. This is probably the perfect grass height for this. Bermuda, there is a wide spectrum of height ranges. Some people will use real mowers and cut their Bermuda grass down at half of an inch. Other people will let theirs go a little bit higher, use rotary mowers, and cut it at two inches. This right now is going crazy. This is, don't ever let your Bermuda grass get this long regularly. This is probably, I don't know, I guess maybe four inches tall. Um, this, I've been letting it grow out simply because I want these. A little bit later in the season, even if even if it's a little cold around here. A little bit later in the season, I want to harvest these sprigs, as many long sprigs as I can, because I want to attempt to um, do some projects with the sprigs. So I haven't wanted to cut it too much. Plus, I wanted to see, I wanted to be able to show you guys um, leaf tips that haven't been cut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this right now so that I can actually show you what this looks like when it's pruned and manicured compared to this, because this does not look good. It's just crazy. So let's clean it up. All right, before I clean it up, I started cutting, but before I clean it up, I want to pull one of these sprigs out because these sprigs, this is basically an above ground stolen. Let me show you what it looks like. So you can see the root system is right there. And I left the grass on top, apparently, somewhere in the pot. Um, but the stolen itself, so the roots come down, and regular grass blades go up this way. But the stolen comes out from the side. And you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, roughly six nodes here. If we put this sprig on the ground flat, each one of these nodes could potentially start rooting down into the soil. Now they're not doing it here because they're draping out and there's no soil for them to reach to. But if I let this thing keep going and it started going around, uh, going across the ground here, any one of these nodes touching the soil down here could start rooting. So I could end up having a potted, a potted plant with a stolen reaching down here and then rooting down here. When we talk about vegetatively spreading stoloniferous grass types, you can do that with both Bermuda and Zoysia. Now, Zoysia, I don't currently have long stolons that I could do that yet. It's not mature enough. This matures slower, but effectively it's the same thing. If you grab one of these sprigs, you could take sharp scissors 
and either cut the sprig into pieces or you could just take this whole thing lay it on bare dirt and just kind of press it down into the soil i mean this isn't soil obviously but if you press it down into bare soil keep it flat water it down enough of these sprigs if you put a whole bunch of sprigs all in a bare dirt scenario enough of them will start rooting down and then they'll start being their own new plants and they'll take over a bare dirt area this ends up being a really great tool for bermuda lawns that have weak spots in it because if you can go against like sidewalks and driveways where these sprigs these runners these stolons grow out and over the sidewalk instead of trim, trimming them off and then just putting them in the trash or whatever or just leaving them for the wind you can collect them and put them concentrated form in the bare spot or the weak area of your lawn and use those sprigs to fill in the gaps now that's the video that's a video that i would like to produce down the road as i gather up these sprigs and try to do that project myself i just want to be clear that that's possible with bermuda and with zoysia and any other grass type that has stolons if you can find the stolons if you can rip stolons out you can use those sprigs for repairs down the road certainly you can do plugs in both of these grass types but the sprigs from the stolons are sometimes overlooked it's an overlooked tool in the shed so to speak all right i've cleaned this up a little bit if i wasn't going to keep these sprigs i would cut them all off but since i want to keep them i'm going to let them keep growing everything on top you can't you get rid of those reddish tips from uh, the cold damage um, it's starting to look like regular turf grass again to use sprigs in the lawn usually you kind of want at least five nodes or so you might be able to get away by doing only four nodes uh, the more nodes and the longer these things get uh, it the easier it is to vegetatively spread or cultivate Bermuda or any other stoloniferous grass. So I'm just letting these grow longer. All right, with my cat in the background, we'll talk about fertilization. Because this grass type, uh, Bermuda, look at that, I can't even read it anymore. Because Bermuda grows so vigorously and so aggressively, it gets fertilized heavily. Now, I haven't fertilized this pot since I planted it. This pot was planted in good potting soil. This is the stuff that we use for a lot of our pots. Uh, happy frog potting soil it's got some mycorrhiza humic acid and a lot of just a lot of good stuff it's got some nutrients in it everything that we plant in this stuff grows better than any other potting soil we've ever tried but these grass types are nutrient hogs especially bermuda they need to be fertilized. So at some point I'll have to either decide to fertilize this or just let it go because it's not gonna last through the winter around here. But you can fertilize very heavily Bermuda grass compared to other grasses from the warm season categories like for instance, centipede. Centipede, you barely fertilize it at all. Buffalo grass is the same thing. Like you just don't need that much. If I opted to add some fertilizer that would darken up this color a little bit more, Certainly some micronutrients would help. Maybe some iron would give it a darker green hue to it. Uh, this coloring is still looking great. And I still think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is a more cold tolerant grass. Now let's look at the root structures that have developed over the past 12 weeks. I haven't looked at this in these pots before, so I don't know what to expect. Wow, I'm not going to lie. I am surprised at how amazing those roots look after 12 weeks of growth. Look at that, man. When I talk about these things rooting deep, they root deep and quick. If this was in a deep pot, like this is a pretty good sized pot, but if this was in a huge pot that went down like two feet, I, I swear that those roots might go down two feet. All right, now let's take a look at the zoysia. All right, this is less impressive. So not only is the green growth on top slow, say hi buddy. Hi. Not only is the green growth on top slow, but the root growth is fairly slow as well. We do have roots coming down to the bottom. They haven't fully caked around and they're not all the way around the sides either. That side has some decent root growth on it. 
but this pot is still maturing. This grass variety just takes longer. It's not as vigorous. After having made a mess of my yard, let's talk about seed heads. Now, I don't have any seed heads to tell you about because, well, it's a new grass and it just hasn't seeded. Both of these grass types, when they put on seed heads, it tends to happen late in the spring or at times, you know, when they're mature but experiencing stress. Now, the seed heads for Bermuda grass are going to stick up and then they're going to turn into kind of like a little helicopter shape. Now with zoysia, the seed heads go straight up and then they kind of look like wheat on the top. It's a totally different shape. Now, as I've said, I grew both of these pots from seed. The Arden 15 is a hybrid Bermuda grass, which is not, which basically means it's not common Bermuda. There are a variety of hybrid Bermuda grasses out there. You can grow them from seed, but that doesn't necessarily mean that if your grass puts on a seed head, that that seed will spread and make new grass. All hybrid Bermuda grasses, what separates them from common Bermuda, which makes them not a weed, so to speak, is that those seed heads aren't going to seed and spread and infiltrate other unintended properties. A weed, for instance, will put its seed out, it'll spread it, and it'll go and propagate itself somewhere else. Hybrid Bermuda is not gonna do that. The same thing goes for pretty much any zoysia that you put down on the ground. If you purchase seed, you can grow zoysia from it, but if that zoysia grass puts on seed heads, it won't spread via seed heads. Pretty much only spread these grass types by using commercially purchased seed or through vegetative purposes like sprigs or plugs or sod. Now I can only grow these things in pots and they're gonna be short-lived here where I live even in these pots because I can't keep them alive during the winter. Our winters are too harsh for them. Zoysia is a better winter tolerant, has a better winter tolerance than Bermuda. Zoysia is a better transition zone grass though. So if you live in a climate that doesn't exactly get to be crazy, crazy freezing throughout the winter, zoysia can be a good alternative grass to uh, to your standard cold season grasses like Kentucky bluegrass or turf type tall fescue. It may green up a little bit later in the spring and shut down a little bit earlier in the fall than your turf types or your Kentucky bluegrasses, but you're going to have significantly better experience with zoysia grass throughout the summer growing season. It's going to be easier to keep green and you're not going to have to worry so much about the seven day forecast or every specific day's weather pattern. It's going to perform in that transition zone really well. Even still, turf type tall fescue is a great option for those transition zones. So if Bermuda is not going to work for you and you're considering zoysia, take a look at zoysia and compare it to turf type tall fescue. I've got an entire turf type tall fescue uh, video. I've got a couple of them here on the channel. I'll link to them down in the description below. Take a look at it and drop any questions down below if you have them.